Hello and welcome to Reptiles and Research. So today we're going to talk about how much to feed an adult bearded dragon. Now if you've come from the guide to feeding baby bearded dragons, then you're following on the story and the guide of the schedules up until adulthood. If you're not and you're unsure, you might want to go back to watch that. Or if you've just inherited an adult bearded dragon, we are good to go. So, so everything I'm going to say in this video is from my own knowledge of keeping my own bearded dragons and my partner's bearded dragons and we interviewed the world's leading expert in bearded dragons on our podcast and so everything you're going to hear in this video is from the leading expert in the world as well as our own experience as well. So you want to feed your adult bearded dragon five dubia roach sized items two days a week and then the rest you want to feed them a bowl of vegetation around the size of their head three days a week and then literally gaps without food in between those days any combination of what days those go on during the week will be fine bearded dragons truly don't need as much food as people are feeding them people are paying more money to overfeed them to cause obesity and issues that they then have to go to the vets and pay more money to fix it's a self-fulfilling cycle that people really don't need to go into when i say five dubia roach sized items i don't mean just only feed dubia roaches i say feed a variety of bugs but if you're feeding a large item around the size of like a dubia roach and you don't want them to have like a monotypic diet of just one bug type as well you want to go like a grasshopper a cockroach a cricket a mealworm a calcium worm you get the idea you want them to have like variety in their diet because each individual species of bug has different nutrient properties some things have different amino acid structures than other things and between the size between their eyes is roughly where you want to go and i don't mean like this way i mean like this way so if the width of your insect fits between the eyes you're good to go bearded dragons need twice as much calcium in their blood as phosphorus and the bugs basically don't have bones, so they actually have exoskeletons, which are pure phosphorus. So providing them with bugs without calcium powders is essentially providing them with phosphorus. And if we do that long term, essentially what happens to the beard of the dragon is that they know that they need twice as much calcium in their blood as phosphorus. So they draw calcium out of their bone storage to bring into their blood again to bump those numbers up. Because it's important they have the calcium ratio circulating in their blood for muscle fibers to even contract for neurons to fire and many different things that calcium is needed for in the body it's a really important resource to be the dragons and that's why it's so important to the fact they'll take it out of their own bones just to use in the blood and what happens if a bone goes bent out of shape when you give them more calcium the bone shape doesn't fix they just relay calcium on a misshapen bone so you really don't want them to get into this state in the first place so that's why when you feed your bearded dragon and you feed them bugs we provide them with calcium powders to make sure that each time they eat some bugs they're getting twice as much calcium going into them as the bugs so the reason they don't have someone like sprinkling calcium powder on their insects in the wild is because in the wild they're actually eating like plants are like 20 times as much calcium as phosphorus in the wild which means cumulatively over their entire diet they're eating far more calcium than phosphorus and that means that they're actually getting a really healthy living out in the wild so let's talk about vegetation so many people have problems getting their bearded dragons to eat vegetation and the reason behind that is because people have raised bearded dragons following these rules of like as many bugs as they'll eat in 15 minutes so they give them all the tasty bugs and like give them everything they want and then when they try to offer vegetation, their bearded dragon is either not really that hungry and kind of full on bugs anyway, and they're like, eh, or they hold out on the vegetation because they know that if they did that the last time, you went and gave them bugs, which is they want, it's their tasty treat. It's like children. Do you want them to eat the, the vegetables or do you want them to have sweets? If you keep giving your kids the sweets, they're constantly going to hold out and be like, no, I don't want any vegetables, thank you. So think of it that way. It's completely fine to just not feed the bugs and completely hold out and just supply veg each time until they eat. They won't starve themselves to death. They're not stupid. They won't look at food right next to them and decide not to eat and die. That They are far more intelligent than, than that. You've got to have a bit of like tough love about you and be like, I can see the situation that's happening here. You're holding out for bugs and you've got a bad habit. I'm literally going to hold off and you're not going to get the bugs until you eat your vegetables. <laughs> you're not having your sweets until you eat the vegetables. And that's basically what you have to be. Your bearded dragon's not going to die. I mean, if you've got an underweight bearded dragon that you've inherited from someone, it's in a bad nick. Um, having those 
protein items for like growth and repair would be good for them but a little bit of common sense of like if you've got a healthy rotund bearded dragon with nice muscle mass you it can go a little bit without eating the bugs completely fine have a bit of tough love about you and it'll eat its veg in terms of what vegetation to feed your bearded dragon you can feed many store-bought vegetation like rocket endive pak choy romaine lettuce there's lots of different store-bought vegetables you can feed snapdragon lots of things like that i'm sure there's many charts floating around you can use some of those but what i like to do is also go out and pick weeds that are really good for your bearded dragon lots of weeds like dandelions are really high in calcium and around my area we've got quite chalky soil so not only are they high in calcium naturally but they also are growing in calcium rich soils so what i like to do is go out pick those run them under some taps it, wash off any bugs or any chance of like dog urine and then they're good to go so i can entirely feed my bearded dragon for free by just foraging weeds now i have an entire guide on how to do that how to use some phone apps and a combination of phone apps how to find out what something is in the wild and then find out if they can feed it if it's toxic if it's that our entire guide is on this channel for you to go out and pick weeds and feed your bearded dragon for free so i am um, i'm of the opinion that that's better and because you're constantly finding variety and you naturally by doing that are giving them a really varied and balanced diet so if you're a person that goes out for walks or you walk with dogs you can just take a carry bag out with you and do a weed pick while you're on the walk and come back and you fed your bearded dragon for free if you've got a female bearded dragon and she's laying eggs and you, you haven't paired her with a male basically what what that means is that she's got an excess of calories and then she's produced eggs naturally they aren't supposed to do that so in the wild a female bearded dragon will only ever lay eggs if mated by a male and the reason we have so many females laying in fertile eggs in captivity is because we're feeding them way too much so if your female bearded dragon's laying eggs then you know you've already got an excess of calories so you need to scale back your calories after that until next time you're like oh she's not laying eggs now and that's your sweet spot as well but if your bearded dragon has gone into a state of like laying eggs or you have bred them and you've got a gravid bearded dragon, again, what you can do is you can increase your protein size, your portion size. So from five bugs, you could go up to like eight, 10 bugs on those two days and just give them the more protein, the more calcium to help her through that higher calorific requirements of being gravid and producing eggs. You want to make sure she has constant supply of calcium. But for the most part, the the amounts that i've just told you they really don't need to eat that much you can bring it right back i hope that was really helpful to you if you want to know about bearded dragon babies you can watch the previous video or if you want a full bearded dragon care guide there's plenty of those on this channel as well but other than that i'll see you in the next guide